you change channels, you regret it. Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we'll be talking about the water scarcity in South Africa. Yes, I know you might think that South Africa has a large variety of resources, but they barely have water. To help us understand, we'll have an expert also affected by this problem elaborate on it. Her name is Ayanda and she lives in a rural community where there is really any water and everyone wants to go to urban cities. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What in the world are rural and urban cities? An urban city is where there's the wealthiest people. And it is where there's the necessitous people. I actually also always thought it was impossible for South Africa to have a low resource on anything. We both know South Africa has a large variety of resources. But the only thing a human needs to survive, it doesn't have water. It didn't only start one way, it actually started many ways. How about you help us understand these many ways it started? At the beginning, everyone had plenty of water. At a point, citizens became selfish with water. 25% of the water was stolen or sold illegally. There, was, there were even a lot of people migrating from villages to cities, and now there was even less water for people who originally in urban cities. <coughs> Surprisingly, South Africa is one of the cleanest water systems in the world. Due to bad sanitization, the, sanitization, the water is not always clean. Another problem, as you said, is that people migrate from villages to the cities. The cities get overwhelmed by the population increasing. As we mentioned it earlier, 35% of the water is stolen. Does low rainfall have anything to do with it? The problem affects people and nature. There's a threat of waterborne diseases. The wildlife is also affected because without water, animals and plants can't survive. It, it also affects rural communities. Well, in some way, it is because of low rainfalls. There's more rainfall, rainfall in some cities than in others. The problem is still very young. Even though it had many effects, the problem can, can be stopped. Is there any way to solve them? A petition putting people in prison? You are right. There is quite many ways to solve the problem, but who will do the first step? The government is way too occupied creating dams, even though the effect of dams is making it worse. They are basically doing what they think is right and don't even bother to ask citizens or try to stop people who create it. What you are telling me is that the government is doing what they think is best, even though it is not. By creating dams, they're creating even more problems. Exactly. If we keep on going like that, if we go, if we keep on going on like that, in a few years we'll have no water at all. Thank you for thank you for being here, Ayanda. It means a lot to us. A beautiful country. Everyone is happy. Water is plenty for everyone. No one is complaining. It is a beautiful country, beautiful lakes and rivers. Families are happy. The whole city is enjoying themselves. Trace have plenty of water and of everything they need. What is happening? Why is everyone so depressed? Why is everyone so sad? What happened to the lakes and rivers? What happened to what used to be a beautiful country? Today we'll have someone affected by this problem help understand our questions. Let's welcome Morgan. Good afternoon, Morgan. How have you been? I'm not so well. It has been very harsh living in rural communities. Everybody wants to live and go to rural communities. Oh, I'm very sorry. I hope you feel better. So can you please answer our questions? Okay. What is happening is very simple. The urban cities are being overwhelmed and are in crisis to be able to nourish the whole city. Everyone is depressed and have their smile upside down because they don't have water and they now die of de de dehydration. The lakes and rivers have less and less water, not only because it is stolen, but also because of salinization. Thank you very much for answering all our questions. We invite you to keep on watching our documentary. Have a good afternoon. South Africa is one of the cleanest water systems in the world. It's due to bad sanitization that the water is not always clean. Another problem is that people from villages migrate to the cities. The cities start to get overwhelmed by the number of population density. Cities are under pressure to provide water for the whole population. In some cases, like Durban, 35% of the water is stolen or is given with illegal connections. Waking up with smiles on your faces, all happy? Guess what? It's definitely not like that in South Africa. Unless you're very wealthy, as soon as you wake up, you have to walk at least 20 kilometers before you can have a sip of water. While they just woke up, are tired, and barely have any force. The thing is, they don't even get clean water. It is always dirty.
Nature is also threatened. Crops need water to survive. If crops die, the population will have problem to eat. Animals cannot survive without water. It disrupts the food chain. Don't worry, South Africa is not doomed. Yet. The problem is still very young. There are var- a variety of very simple and easy ways to stop the problem. Put security all over water places so it won't be sold or stolen. Take short showers. Water your plant early for less evaporation. Stop creating dams. Imprison people as soon as they are found. Turn off the sink when you're washing and rinsing the dishes. Instead of buying iPhone 6s and traveling to Fiji for the 8th consecutive year, try to help a country that might not be yours, but that could become something very important to your life. As a wise man named Thomas Fuller will say, You will never know the worth of water till the well is dry.